Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Tuesday, May the 23rd. I'm Rafi Bajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at what's happening in the currency markets today. So the main headline this morning uh, is that terrorist uh, incidents in Manchester where a suicide bomber apparently killed uh, 22 people, um, which is the, the figure, the latest figure available. Uh, and that had quite a bit of an impact on the pound, uh, although um, the pound is down against most major currencies. Uh, we're not seeing t too many major moves in the markets. Uh, the yen did gain initially, um, as the yen usually does whenever there is a major terrorist incident around the world. Uh, but the overall market reaction is fairly muted. We are seeing risk appetite improve as we go into the European session. The euro hit a fresh six month high a short while ago. Uh, we had very strong PMI data out of France and Germany. Uh, and the Aussie and Kiwi, um, although certain currencies um, are seeing, uh, are, are, are being weighed by risk aversion, the Aussie and the Kiwi uh, are benefiting from, uh, we are seeing slightly stronger risk appetite in Asia over the past couple of days, uh, mainly from rising commodity prices and that's helping the Australian and the New Zealand dollars. But let's begin with the pound, we can see that uh, the pound, yesterday actually the pound was already hurt by um, the, the, the latest opinion polls out of the UK which showed a big drop in uh, Theresa May's Conservative Party's lead over the Labour Party um, and uh, this morning of course we had the terrorist incidents uh, so we're seeing sterling down around 0.3% um, against the US dollar, currently trading at 1.2957. Uh, it's down 0.6% against the yen, uh, and it touched a near two months low against the euro, which hit 0 0.8666 uh, pounds. Um, and as mentioned, sterling was already under pressure yesterday uh, over the the drop in uh, Conservatives' lead uh, in the polls ahead of the June elections in two and a half weeks' time. Uh, and of course, there was that uh, report that uh, the UK is willing to walk out of the Brexit talks if the EU isn't willing to negotiate over the Brexit bill. Um, and uh, moving on to the yen now against the pound and the euro we can see the yen is stronger this morning um gold is also up slightly uh, it's currently trading just about 1260 dollars an ounce um, but we did have weaker than expected manufacturing pmi out of japan uh, which did weigh on the yen a little bit uh, this morning the flash manufacturing pmi fell to 52.0 down from 52.7 in april uh, and that's below forecast of 52.9 uh, moving on to the US dollar now, uh, the US dollar has been fairly steady this week, uh, all, we, we still have that uncertainty over uh, the Trump presidency weighing uh, on the dollar. Uh, the focus today is on the new budget, uh, well this is the proposed budget by the White House by President Trump, it doesn't mean that Congress will approve it. Uh, but uh, the budget is aiming to balance uh, the numbers by 2027. Um, it's going to contain big cuts to uh, benefits to uh, mainly that's going to impact uh, the poor. Uh, but it, it does have uh, $200 billion of infrastructure spending allocated there. Um, but as I said, we don't know in what form this budget will get uh, approved. Moving on to the euro, because the euro continues to outperform other currencies, uh, it hit a, a new six-month high of $1.1267 uh, a short while ago. Uh, we are seeing still that uh, the bullish sentiment that we saw for the euro ever since uh, Macron uh, won the first round of the French presidential election. Uh, also, we have those uh, growing expectations that the ECB uh, will uh, will soon uh, revise its forward guidance uh, to a less dovish one at the June policy meeting. Uh, we had comments from German uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel yesterday who said the currency uh, was too weak. And although this uh, 
this is something uh, the markets are already know uh, that German politicians and the Bundesbank as well uh, are not in favor of the ECB's ultra loose policies, uh, which are keeping the euro uh, too low. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, given the overall sentiment for the euro we're seeing at the moment, that just gave an additional boost to the single currency. Uh, and today we had the stronger than expected uh, flash PMI readings out of Germany uh, and France, uh, and we saw that spike. Uh, upwards to 1.1267. Uh, let's have a quick look at the Aussie and the Kiwi now because um, both currencies are, have been benefiting from the weaker dollar uh, as well as uh, a rebounding commodity prices such as iron ore uh, which Australia exports uh, and dairy which is uh, main, New Zealand's main export. Uh, the Aussie hit a two and a half week high of 0 0.7508 against the US dollar and the, and the New Zealand dollar uh, surged to four week high of 0 0.7039. Uh, we're seeing um, also we've got on Thursday the New Zealand government will announce uh, its latest budget where a big surplus is expected uh, and also the government is expected to give a uh, positive uh, forecast for economic growth for New Zealand. Uh, so that's why we're seeing the New Zealand dollar being one of the uh, big, bigger performance of the, in the past uh, few days. Uh, and lastly, uh, let's have a quick look at commodities, uh, uh, oil prices. Uh, they're down around 0.75%, both US crude and Brent crude. In the chart, we can see US crude currently trading at $50.73 a barrel. Uh, the reason why prices are down this week, despite uh, th that those growing hopes that OPEC and Russia will agree uh, to extend the output deal uh, on Thursday, uh, there was an announcement by the White House, uh, it's part of Trump's uh, proposed budget, uh, where the US government wants to sell uh, half of its uh, strategic oil reserves. Uh, and if they do go ahead with this, it would have a, quite a big impact on the oil market, given that the US currently has uh, the world's biggest uh, oil reserves. Uh, so that's why we're seeing that dip today, although overall we, we still have support uh, on those expectations that we will get an extension deal uh, this Thursday. Uh, and moving on to the economic calendar, we did have German GDP, uh, the, the second estimates which showed German output was up 0.6% in the first quarter uh, in line with expectations and uh, the same as the first uh, reading. Um, we, we can see here that the French and German PMIs were much stronger than expected. Uh, both the services and manufacturing PMIs in France, uh, we can see they came in, well actually the manufacturing PMI was uh, a bit weaker than expected but the service PMI was much stronger than expected uh, and German numbers uh, were also um, mostly positive uh, as well so, and later coming up we're going to have the Euro, uh, the, uh, the figures for the whole of the Eurozone. Um, but it's going to be a quieter US session. We're only going to have the new home sales and the flash manufacturing PMI later in the day, uh, as well as uh, a speech by Neil Kashkari, which might impact the market as well. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.